Hello, Lee. Hello, how are you? Good. I'm just, uh, I'm so happy to see you here. I'm just mm, happy to be here ready. too. We're live on YouTube. Awesome. Perfect. Yes, there you are. <laughs> okay, so um, thanks for making time to do this. We want to take a lot of your time. Oh, of course, I'm happy to. Yeah, um, so first, can you tell people uh, who you are? Mm -hmm. And I know you're, you're a pretty big wig in the American Academy of Pediatrics. So tell people what that is. Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Lee Beers. I am a pediatrician at Children's National. Um, I work in our health center at the main hospital. Um, and I'm also this year the, the current president of the American Academy of Pediatrics uh, nationwide. Awesome. So I'm sure you've been getting all sorts of uh, questions about the vaccine for kids. Yeah. And we had a few, we, we posted this on social media. So I have a few questions for you. Awesome. Uh, so I'll have you answer those. And then maybe you can just tell us some of the questions you're hearing. Yeah. Uh, the first one is, can you talk about um, why kids should get a vaccine, even though they've had COVID-19? Yeah, that's a really good question. Actually, we we hear that a lot. Um, you know, a big part of the reason is that we are not 100% certain where we aren't certain how long the immunity from COVID-19 will last. Um, we actually have a much better idea of it for the vaccines. And so, um, you know, it's it it's really just ensures that your child will be safe and, and protected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of questions about why people should trust the vaccine for their children. So can you um, provide some reassurance and help people understand how we know the vaccine is safe for kids? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, it's funny, I actually just before we're having this conversation was just on another kind of panel webinar with the head of the FDA and people from the CDC who were talking all about this. And, I, you know, I know about it, too. So so the timing is good. You know, so there, there's a couple of things. First, you know, the 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 vaccine development process is really very cautious and structured. Um, you know, one of the things people have questions about a lot is, well, it happened really quickly this time around. And so, could you know, they must have cut corners if it happened this quickly. And, and that's really not true. Um, there's a couple of pieces to that. One is that the essentially the technology and the, the, the science that led to the development of COVID vaccine has been under development for, for, for 10 to 20 years. Um, so it's actually been under development for a really long time. And the things the the, the ways that they allowed the vaccine to be developed more quickly um, actually involved basically cutting out the paper, like all the paperwork barriers. So, you know, not letting things sit on someone's desk for six months before they signed off on it, right? Yeah, that's exactly, you know, you know, you normally in, you know, in the government or other places, you know, you, you sign something and then it goes to someone's inbox and it sits there forever. And then, and they, they cut out all that. So that's actually how, how the, the, how things moved through so quickly. Um, and then what we know about kids is, is actually, so the initial trials, you know, were of course done in, um, adults and older adolescents, older teenagers. Um, and we've now at this point had millions and millions and millions of adults who have had these vaccines and who we've been able to test safety on. And, and um, uh, now the clinical trials, as we all know, just as of last week, um, are approved for, for kids 12 years and older. Um, and the same rigor was applied to, to that as well. And of course, using all the things we learned um, from the adult vaccine, but maybe the best way, that was a lot, I, that was a lot of answers, but yeah. <laughs> maybe the best way I could and say that I feel like it's safe is that my own 12 year old actually got his this morning. So yeah, well, are you having parents say I don't want to vaccinate my kids? No, it's next, right? We I, I think just like and just like with adults, you know, when when this first came out, there were some adults who who really felt confident and ready right away. There were other people who really wanted, um, you know, they wanted a little bit more information before they made the decision and others weren't quite ready to make the decision yet. And that's, that's what we're seeing in families too. So I've got lots of patients and, and, uh, you know, friends of our family who, who, uh, you know, it was like, they were trying to get concert tickets to get the vaccine appointment. They were trying to get it so quickly. I've had others who had a, had a lot of questions and they wanted to talk through it, but that's all okay. So. Yeah. 
So when kids get COVID-19, um, are they generally not as sick as adults? Or what so, can you say about kids with COVID-19? Yeah. And you know, that's something that gets misunderstood sometimes. So, so it's good. Kids do get less sick than adults. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, um, but it doesn't mean that kids can't get sick. Um, and some kids get very, very sick. Actually, there's been nationwide over 14,000 kids hospitalized with COVID. Um, and so some kids do get very sick and actually for some of those kids, they, um, um, have symptoms that last weeks or even months. Uh, so, so we definitely can, you know, kids definitely can get sick. It is, is we estimate probably the 10th or 11th leading cause of death in ch children this year. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, I mean, kids are just healthier. Right. And so, um, it's, it is, it, kids don't get as sick as adults do, and they don't spread it in the same way that adults do. And that's all good, but it doesn't mean they don't get sick and they don't spread it. So that's a really important reason for the vaccination. So we do know kids can spread COVID-19 to adults. Yep. Yes, most definitely. Most definitely. And that's another important reason, right? Because, you know, all we all live together in communities and we have um, family members and friends and neighbors um, who might be at risk for severe illness too. So. Yeah. And what do you say to parents who say, well, I'd like to wait, you know, a few years to see what the impact is on kids and if we have unknown side effects that show up years later. Yeah. You know, I think the, the first thing I would say is that, you know, first a hundred percent is always a family's decision, right? And they should ask all the questions that they have and talk with their pediatrician about it. But, you know, one of the things I, I think about, and I try to remind people about is that there are also a lot of impacts and side effects of getting sick with COVID. Um, and COVID is so widespread right now that there's a really good chance if you don't get the immunization, the, get the immunization, at some point you will get sick with COVID. And so we also don't know what the side effects in two, three years of COVID will be, but we've certainly seen a lot of kids. Again, you've probably heard about this long hauler syndrome in adults. We're seeing that in kids too, where they're where they're really sick for long periods of time. And so, um, you know, everything that we can tell right now is that your risk so much lower to get the vaccine than with, with, with actually getting COVID. Yeah. And can you think of a vaccine that had new side effects or um, long-term effects show up many years after the kids got the vaccine? You know, not many years after there was one circumstance with a vaccine called the rotavirus vaccine. And when they moved from the sort of part of the trials where they approved the vaccine to then where lots of people got it, they, they discovered a new, a, a side effect they hadn't seen previously, but that actually was picked up in the first couple of months. Um, it wasn't something that was years later. It was, it was just something that was so rare that, um, you know, they didn't pick it up until there were, to, until more kids had gotten the vaccine, but, but actually when you compare that with the number of people who've gotten the COVID vaccine, there's way more people who've gotten the COVID vaccine than had gotten this, this rotavirus vaccine when, when they picked it up. So, um, and again, that was, you know, that happened really quickly. Um, it wasn't something that was years later. Yeah, I'm asking this question because I think parents are concerned about what we don't know about it. But it, if we haven't had this situation arise, it, it makes me wonder, yeah. um, are we treating this COVID-19 vaccine uh, differently than we have other vaccines? And are we holding it to a different standard yeah. than other vaccines? We're asking a lot of questions about this vaccine that we don't ask about other vaccines. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I think that I think that's true, and I understand that, right? I mean, that's the, there's you know there's a lot going on right now, so I yeah. I understand that. Yeah. A lot of confusing things. Yeah. Um, people also want to know about the impact on um, child development and specifically brain development. Any concerns there? No, no concerns actually. You know, it's um, and again, what I would be more concerned with is. Um, a child getting ill with COVID and being one of those kids who gets really, really ill and having some of those, those long haulers symptoms um, that sometimes cause, you know, dizziness or, or really prolonged fatigue, you know, kind of fuzzy, fuzzy thinking is what the adults call it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're not seeing that in the immun we're not seeing that in the immunizations, but we are for sure seeing that in people who get the COVID infection. So, so again, I'd be more concerned about it um, if you got COVID. So. Yeah, 
Okay. And the last question we got um, from the, the social media family is, when will the vaccine be available for children under 12? Well, I, I can tell you hot off the presses what the director of the FDA said. <laughs> just, just, uh, just, just uh, you know, 20 minutes ago, uh, which is he doesn't know for sure, because of course, this is part of the vaccine development process, right? Is that we have to see the trials through and we have to look at the data and they have to review it really carefully. Um, but if things go as people think they will and there aren't any surprises, um, probably in the fall, probably sort of, you know, early back to school time frame. So, um, you know, but that of course, th that's, you know, at one step at a time, because we got to look at, you know, this is why we want to be sure we're safe and we want to look at the data and we want to look at everything really carefully. But, but that's that's, that's everyone's kind of best guess. Yeah. So in the meantime, before fall gets here, you saw CDC now says that if you're fully vaccinated, you can be in public, indoors and outdoors without a mask. Yeah. What do you think about this, particularly for parents who are concerned their kids will be exposed to people who are unvaccinated without a mask? Yeah, that's hard, right? Because it relies a little on an honor system and that, yeah, that's hard. <laughs> yeah, that works. Yeah. Uh, you know, I would say if your child is unvaccinated, I would absolutely, you know, could have them continue to wear masks um, and continue to be careful. Because again, I think, you know, we would hope that folks out and about who are, who are unmasked are not vaccinated, but we don't, don't really know that. And so I, I, for your unvaccinated kids, I really would um, continue to be cautious um, and continue to, to wear a mask, to try to avoid really crowded situations, you know, lots of hand washing. Um, you know, it is, and I think again, I, important point to emphasize is that, you know, we also, know that wearing masks and good hand washing and good sort of checking your symptoms before you go into school, you can actually go to school very safely is what we've learned with masking. Um, and so I think that's, that's an important thing to, to remember as well is that, is that, you know, really consistent masking allows you to go to school really safely, but yeah, I, I would keep the masks on, especially for the younger yeah. kids. It's a, it's a tough situation. Yeah. Yeah. So um, do you have any questions I haven't asked you that are common questions you're hearing from parents or from other people? You know, I think these are the big ones. Um, you know, I think the main thing that really important point that I would say is, is if you have questions, call your pediatrician and talk to them about your questions. Cause I, you know, it is a lot of information. I mean, I don't know about you, Lisa, but when, you know, when the vaccine first came out, I looked at the data myself. I, you know, I, I looked at everything before I made a decision to get the vaccine for myself. I, I talked to our ID people. I had my questions answered. And so that, that's, everyone should be able to do that. So if you have questions, um, talk to your pediatrician. I think the other really important important thing on that note is that we have seen a lot of kids fall behind on their all their other shots during this period of time um, because they've kind of been a little nervous about going to the doctor or or there's just so much going on right now it's been hard to get into the doctor so I would absolutely um, you know if you're if you're behind on your well child checkups or on your on your uh, you know uh, other vaccines or if you've got an asthma checkup that's coming due call your pediatrician so you can get in and get seen for that too because it's important to stay healthy across the board or maybe we should find ways to take vaccines to the people how about that yeah, we're doing some of that. We're doing some of that, actually. We're doing some of that. So, and, you know, for anyone who, who has a child who's 12 and up, who would like a vaccine, you know, would like to get the COVID vaccine, you can actually register through um, the children's website, the children's national website. Um, and we're doing vaccines at the main hospital and also um, out at the ARC. So, okay, well, we'll be sure to put that web address for people in the, um, in the comments so that people can find that resource. So Dr. Lee Beers, uh, president of the American Academy for Pediatrics, thank you so much for being here and answering people's questions. I know it's a tricky time, lots of confusion. So it's really nice to have people like you who can help them understand what's happening and make good decisions. Always ha happy to do it and always happy to answer questions. So, All right. Thank you so Great. much. Thank you.